these videos note that they're all being uh, they're all files that are being generated on an even multiple of 30. So either at the top, or an, I, I take that back, an even multiple of 15. So, so if it's um, the video is either being started or saved, it was started at either the top of an hour, the bottom of an hour, quarter past an hour, or quarter of the next hour. So 0, 15, 20, 0, 15, 30, 45 is basically it. Um, okay. Picture this. One night you're scanning the radio dial and you're so used to, you know, hearing 99.1 and a 99.5. But then all of a sudden you, you hear this 99.3 and 99.7. And you wonder what the heck they are. This it's a fictitious scenario, by the way. It's it's only me being hypothetical. But then suddenly you hear this, and you wonder what the hell this 99.3 is, because you you Google anything under your imagination, you know, like 99.3 FM New England, 99.3 Massachusetts, or something. You can't find it, but all of a sudden you recognize that not only was there 99.3 that was not available on many of the online radio directories. But this station was not absent on those directories by any means because it was new, because that station had been in existence for the past 40 years. It just never built a website, and it was such a small radio station, nobody ever cared about it. And uh, so you learn that this 99.3 was, in fact, not from hundreds of miles away but rather instead was a lonesome five watt school radio station from a local academic facility. You turn, it turns out that it's from a college from say seven towns over. Say like let's suppose it's from Pepperell or something. There's a university in Pepperell, hypothetically speaking. It's not, I don't really know, but so you drive on over to Pepperell and you hear a very eclectic mix of music. It's almost like Magic 106.7 on steroids. It's just, it's really, it's, in, it's super, it's incredible. You hear, some, and suddenly you hear Deeper and Deeper by Madonna. You hear like, anytime you hear a song by a particular artist, it's going to be a song that you never heard before, that you never expected to hear on the radio. But it doesn't go overly nuts. It sticks to the formatting. Like every so often you'll hear a half regular song like um, All I Want to Do by Sheryl Crow. So you, the station does stick to the format that it belongs to, but it, it selects different tracks. And uh, so you're like, wow, so this is a five watt, uh, this is a lonesome five watt school radio station. You're like, and after spending a day, you know, a day of it in the town, you don't want to leave the town that that station services because you're so intrigued by the variety of music on it. So you wonder, gee, is there any place I could stay? So you find a motel at the edge of town, the only one in town, but it's sort of iffy in the reception. Then the next following day, somebody offers you hey, I know a place you can stay right on campus of the school that the station is from, although it's kind of shady and iffy behavior, you know, to do that, but I'm blinded by my obsession. i got to listen to that station. So somebody gets me a fourth-floor dorm room on the grounds of the, the campus of where the station broadcasts from. And as I'm there listening non-stop, uh, day in, day out, sun up to sundown, or, you know, from uh, wake up to, you know, time to get up to bedtime and all that, I try at some point to be at a computer and look up info on this station. I type in the call letters and I just get gibberish. There's like no online availability. But I'm loving the uh, variety I'm hearing. By all means, I'm not going to be wanting to listen to stations on the internet 
whilst I'm on that campus. Because remember the availability. It's the lack of availability for that small radio station without a website is driving me away from the stations that give me more options. That's just like my younger brother Matthew got his four-year bachelor's degree from UMass Dartmouth. And I recall that from Dartmouth, Massachusetts, or even New Bedford, you can, the cable systems pick up almost all, you can watch almost all the Boston stations on the cable systems down in the New Bedford area. But those cable systems or services down there also feature in, or include a lot of the Rhode Island stations, which are much tinier and smaller than the Boston ones. So, but I could always watch the Boston stations back home. You know, if I wanted to watch a Boston newscast, I could always do it back home. But if I wanted to watch a Rhode Island or a Providence area newscast, I could only do that at Dartmouth. So which newscast, which city do you think I'm going to be watching the stations from? I'm going to be watching the television stations from Rhode Island, undoubtedly, because of the lack of options. So I love taking advantage of the more limited options. So, for instance, um, let's see, what's another one? Say that the, th that the two terabyte hard drives are going to be out of production. Uh, and you can, you'll only be able to get one or three gig hard drives. Um, then I'll always be able to get the one gig ones, but I won't be able to get the two gig ones for much longer. So I got to hurry up and get the two gig ones while I can. That's the way I think. So, gee, this lo this lonesome five, gee, this lonesome five watt radio station that offers eclectic adult contemporary of the 70s through 2009 is really quite awesome. If I wanted to listen to Magic 106.7, I could always do that back home. I know the signal works fine over here in Pepperell, but the, I certainly most, most no way in hell could ever get this 5-watt radio station I'm listening to here back home. Nor could I find anything available on it on the Internet. It's entirely, um, completely locked into this area. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep my radios, my radio receivers locked to this mysterious station. I'm not going to be listening to any Boston area stations because I could always do that when I'm back home. So that's the idea. When I'm up in visiting New Hampshire's North Country, I got my radio receivers locked to the radio New England broadcast group stations because those are the stations without websites. Um, if I wanted to listen to the Boston, Massachusetts stations, I could always go on the internet and listen live to their online radio streaming. But I could not do that for the Radio New England Broadcast Group stations, because those stations don't even have websites, let alone stream online. Therefore, those would be the only stations I'll listen to for my entire duration up there. They Only the stations without websites. Um, or, for instance, say I were over in, say I was over at a school, and there were two mixed radio stations. One owned by a much larger, bigger company that offered online streaming service for many of its clusters. And then a smaller independent mix station that had no webcast. Perhaps it had a website, but it had no streaming. I would keep my, my radio locked to that smaller one that doesn't stream on, that does not stream online because of the lack of availability of options. So that's how I do it. I depend solely upon whichever station offers me fewer listening options or less listening options. Um, so the instant a radio station streams on the internet, 
that's going to make me like it even less. I like it if it has no website, it doesn't even stream online, but it offers an extremely nice mix or blend of music. But it's not like one of those AAA stations. You know, it's not like WXRV in Haverhill, Boston, or Point Radio up in Vermont. It's got its own, it, it sticks not to the album oriented rock, but more album oriented adult contemporary or album oriented pop. I'm not always a slow poke or an emotion loving, you know, music person. I also like the hip hop and the pop music and stuff. My favorite apparatus is to have one station that's slower, more candle lighting, more uh, ballads, more, you know, power ballads, more softer stuff, anything from 70s beautiful music clear through to Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears. I generally appreciate when the, oh, and then to have the, the one that's the pop. So say have the AC slash hot AC apparatus where you have two stations. One handles all the power ballads and the candlelight music and the um, love songs and stuff. And then the other station handles more of the cutting edge like the, um, say, the Pussycat Dolls and Britney Spears and um, Kasha and Lady Gaga and stuff has a little bit more of a hot adult contemporary feel, but then to have the AC one and to have both stations have no website um, and be extremely small town, um, have have them serve a very um, desolate, um, sparsely populated area, sparsely settled area. So I'm talking, say, you know, those um, remote rural territories between, somewhere between the Burlington, Vermont area and the Littleton, New Hampshire area where it's just a bunch of side roads and there's no main road. It's just a ton of like now turn off for this route and onto Route 28 and say move off of Route 17 onto Route 19, off Route 19 onto 21. There's just tons of like back streets and stuff. There's no direct, you know, main streets where you can just stay on a single route and it gets you there. I'm talking like, what if, for instance, you know how there's there's route, there's Interstate 89 or I-89 or even route number two, which leads you eventually to Montpelier, Vermont. North of Route 2 in I-91, however, is a bunch of side streets where there's no real main road that leads you anywhere. You have to keep, you know, veering off of one road and go on to another one and go on to another one and go on to another one. I love radio stations that serve optimal signal strength for the areas without any of the main roads. But as soon as you start working your way south and start get approaching or getting close to where the Route 2 is or the I-89 is, you start losing the signal. So I'm talking about a radio signal where its optimal coverage range is way up in that, you know, north of Route 2 and I-89, Interstate 89, serving areas sort of somewhat east of Burlington, Vermont, but a signal that dies as you approach Route 2 and I-89 from the north. And so you have to be pretty much in the middle of nowhere in like small towns such as Hardwick, Vermont, or Lindenville, Vermont, or Linden, stuff like that. And it starts, stations that start weakening whenever you start approaching any community of substantial size. So the instant you start approaching Montpelier, Vermont, it whites out. The instant you start approaching St. Johnsbury, it starts to wipe out. 
the instant you start approaching uh, Sherbrooke in the Quebec border, it whites out. Or the second you try to approach Route 2 or Interstate 89 from, uh, from the north, it wipes out. It has to, you have to be in a very small town that's not really on the map. It's like the middle of nowhere. And it has to be a station with no website. So when you go to explore those small towns that you have to only, that can only be accessed by side roads, um, and you're walking around those, exploring those communities with your handheld Walkman in hand, Rest assured, you're listening to a small town radio station with no website, and you're visiting a town that you'll probably have a very difficult time finding any photographs of on the internet, which then explodes my appeal to take photographs in the center of that small town. So I like visiting small, you know, New Hampshire North Country communities where it's very difficult to find any photograph of and then just take, go on a picture-taking spree. Um, I'm trying to teach myself to be certain that I'm not being too invasive. Like, the things I'm taking pictures of, nobody gives a crap, you know. Go ahead and take all the pictures you want, you know. Doesn't hurt us, doesn't hurt you. Avoiding awkward situations where I just start going, ooh, nice, I'm going to take some pictures. But failing to recognize I should probably ask permission. My goal is to prevent is to prevent people from saying, "Hey, what are you doing?" Um, so far, what do you what do you guys think when I when you hear me go like, "It's a great mixed radio station with no website." <laughs> what do most people think of that? I don't know. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, but if if I already told you what kind of radio, what type of radio stations I like, you know, ones where they substantially lose signal strength whenever you approach population centers. They only work in the middle of nowhere, and they have no website or prospect of ever building one. Uh, they have to be, um, they have to have signals that are very difficult to get in perfectly. So they're like, they're always a little fizzy. In other words, they have to be low budget and using older equipment and stuff. What kind of radio stations do I dislike? Uh, corporate cookie cutter stations that um, are so concerned with the bottom line that they they pretty much spend at least equal amounts of time, if not more, on their engineering their webcast as they do on engineering their broadcast. Stations that don't have the local appeal to them. They're just like some sort of a, you can feel they're being managed from thousands, hundreds or possibly even more than a thousand miles away. Um, their websites all look generic. Their jingles are generic. Their weather forecast weather beds are generic. Uh, they always go, today's best variety. And you're like, yeah, variety, my butt. <laughs> Those are the ones I don't like. Ones where, and, and where they, their webcast even is via a, some sort of a generic listen live link that um, is the same. So, one example would be, well, Certain uh, commonly used webcast services include, but are not limited to, uh, Stream the World. They they stream listen. They offer their streaming services in Stream the World format, um, which can be accessed directly from a generic provision streaming type of a link, which turns out is PLS which you fill in the blanks at the end, which tend to be the station's call letters, uh, followed by AM or FM, whatever one. In some instances, FM radio stations, their webcast for FM radio stations, some, or some FM radio stations identify their webcast as AM for some reason. 
or some AM radio stations identify their webcast as FM for no apparent reason. Like say, this is this is fictitious, but suppose the webcast for WMME 92 Moose from the Waterville Augusta area. Its listen live link could be in WMME AM instead of FM, just to throw things off balance a bit. But basically, many stations, corporate stations, love employing the use of a generic um, service provider to stream their audio on the internet or onto the web. And one popular such format is Stream the World. Uh, Citadel uses it, Intercon or Citadel Broadcast. Among the radio corporations that love using Stream the World includes Citadel Broadcasting, Intercom Communications, uh, PAML Broadcasting, and Cox Radio, as well as the GAF Broadcasting Group and the GAF West Broadcasting Group. Those and a couple others love using, um, oh, and NASA Broadcasting too, loves using the provision streaming service provided by Stream the World. And they offer their streams in both MP3 and or AAC plus format. Um, I like it when there's a small town station that's completely different. Their logo artwork is entirely different. Their ideas are original. Um, I don't like, well, see many of the CBS stations have just as much, if not more, presence on the internet than they ever do broadcasting. It's a great small town radio station. Unfortunately, the station has a website, but I still like it because it's such a small town station. Um, have any of you ever heard of uh, the LA areas, Lewiston, Auburn, Maine areas, WEZR AM, which it's AM, it's Easy 1240. So again. How many of you have ever heard, how many of you watching this video have ever heard of WEZR, Easy 1240, Lewiston, Auburn, Maine? It's a small town full service radio station. What I love about the station is the fact that it's confined to the AM dial. And it's not often you hear an adult contemporary music format on the AM dial. So that makes it kind of fascinating to be listening to that station in AAC plus web audio. But pretty much whenever I do this, I'm going to have to wiggle it around as I show you the, the pop-up player because it's extremely uh, it's copyrighted. So... Uh, let's see. There's a pop-up box as such. Whenever I view that pop-up box, I get this so close I can almost feel it feeling. Or I can imagine WLTN-FM Mix 96.7 featuring a similar such box that could allow me to listen to the audio from that station just as I can from WEZR. Now, WEZR is a great, it's an excellent station. It's got me hooked. I mean, they're definitely going the right direction. They got the right idea. The thing is, though, remember what I told you in the prior, in an older video, one of these. Remember what I said. I mean, remember what I told you about how 
some radio stations have more interruptions. I'm not very good on camera, but I'll try to get to this. So what's wrong with WEZR? Well, nothing really much. So what's wrong with WEZR Easy 1240? Well, not much actually. It's just, I mean, they're going in the right direction, but Remember everything I said about interruptions of the radio formatting of the station? WEZR has a higher number of interruptions of their programming than does WLTNFM Mix 96.7. And partially what I think this is that's causing that is the fact that the WLTN apparatus, as I call it, is divvied up into two radio stations. On either band, both sharing the same exact call sign. There's the oldies 1400 and the Golden Great 98.5, which is WLTN AM, based off of 1400 on the dial. But WLTN FM is also WLTN, but it's the FM counterpart. And so every time there's an athletic sporting event, including Red Sox baseball games or local Little to New Hampshire area athletic team sporting events, WLTN AM takes those broadcasts while meanwhile Mix 96.7 WLTN continues airing their station formatting without any interruptions. Um, Obviously, WEZR doesn't have that luxury because they're only available on the AM dial, and that's it. Um, but that's another aspect I like is a radio station that does not interrupt or disrupt their formatting as frequently. So WLTN-FM only interrupts the programming or their format for their morning show, Mondays through Fridays from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., and then they're back to the same old regular formatting. So, and every weekend, it's entirely local. There's no morning, there's no specialty programming, there's no countdowns, there's no backtracks, no nothing. So, um, so what's wrong with WE, what's the matter with WEZR? Nothing much, really. I mean, I can't find much wrong with it. They're an excellent small town radio station. They're, they're definitely a step in the right direction. They're just, um, they just, just, just remember what I said, though. It's kind of a pain in the ass to have the radio station stop the music more for you know, we have, we've got to put these broadcasts. See, WEZR is more of like a community station where at any juncture in time, they could just stop the music. The music is pretty much to pass the time. It's not really all music. It's Music's only one aspect of the station. But WLTN Mix 96.7 is all about the music. It's more pretty much all of what the all of what the station consists of. So pretty much all of what the station consists of is entirely music, with a few interruptions, because they've got WLTN AM oldies 1400 and the Golden Great 98.5 to catch the signal. So that way, you know, they can catch them so that that draws the necessity away from WLTN-FM to have to broadcast, you know, live events and stuff. Um, so I like that. You know, WLTN-FM is a treat. Think of it almost like back in the day we used to have LimeWire and Causa to download music and stuff. But these days, many of those programs are making things only allowing people to download protected WMA files. And we want 
I mean, we would kill to have the old experience back where we could just download high-quality MP3s without any interruption. Of course, that's illegal. That's not that's illegal downloading, so that's bad. But how we would do it if we could, right? So it's that it's that very essence of the forbidden fruit, you know. So, for instance, my younger brother and and my mom and everyone, everybody judges me a lot. They you know they say that I'm being dishonorable by trying to go up to New Hampshire and rent motel rooms and stuff. And they're trying to make me second guess my actions as though I need to reconsider or I need to, you know, reassess myself because I'm straying outside the bounds, like I'm being overtaken by the dark side, right? So, but... What if all of a sudden one day people said, Mark, we were just kidding. We were pulling your leg. Do what you want. I'd be off like a bat. So right now, I don't know what the heck the deal is. Somebody could walk up to me and say, Mark, you should be ashamed of yourself. Another hypothetical scenario. I'm just just making a point here. They could say, you know, you should really be ashamed of yourself. Um, you're selfish, you're, we need to watch you a little more closely. Or people could be like, I think that we failed to realize what a great man Mark is. You know, those are called pardons, you know. Occasionally people get these pardons where people walk up to them and go, we're so sorry, like sort of in that Ray Charles movie where he, Ray was banned from singing at any location or establishment in the state of Georgia. And they're pretty much uh, booking him. Now, he was pretty much booked for inappropriate conduct, you know. Mr. Ray Charles, you cannot sing anymore in the state of Georgia. You are banned from the whole state. Uh, but then later, you know, there's that scene where it's like where Ray Charles made a stand by refusing to sing before um, was banned from the from singing in the entire state of Georgia for refusing to play at a, in a segregated establishment. Well, I'm so delighted to say that we've come a long way since back then. So yes, it's when people get pardoned. Since I say that you, people could go either of one or two ways in life. They could either get um, somebody walk up to them in discipline. They could either receive disciplinary action or someone walking up to them and telling them, you should be ashamed of yourself. You're for shame. Or they could get pardoned. So either you get disciplined or you get pardoned. And I've never reached a point in my life where somebody all of a sudden recognizes me and, and acknowledges me and stuff. That's never happened to me before. It's Everything is entirely going against the grain. So after a while, what did I do? I stopped caring. I... Um, I don't care if it makes my parents swear at me or, well, again, I'm being hypothetical. I'm saying, what if somebody was to start swearing at me and saying, like, and trying to make me feel embarrassed or ashamed of my decision I made to do this thing? Um, I, that stuff used to bother me, but now I don't really care anymore. I just go do it. Screw them. And why I'm doing that? Because uh, there might be a more etiquette, politically correct way to do it. But I don't really know how. So I'm just going to have to just guess and say that maybe perhaps I should just do this. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's vast differences, you know, between being banned from performing 
in the entire state of Georgia for refusing to, because he was being dishonorable, and or they they were probably dubbing him as being dishonorable or disrespectful, um, not knowing his place, or try to think of any stupid excuse they could possibly think of to consider Ray Charles a bad person. But then later they come back and they're like, they honor him. You know, they're like, dude, you know, we were we were wrong. Uh, you were right. You did the right thing. I live for the day when I can get that honor. When people can say I did the right thing. When I can defy and I can disrespect and disregard and stuff. And then later somebody can come back and be like, you know something? You weren't disrespecting. You weren't defying. You weren't disregarding. You were doing the right thing. And we were too blind to see that you were dead on. Well, now we've got eyes to see, and you did the right thing. I think in black and white. That's how I think. I think in yes or no. So, it's although the real world isn't so written in stone, that's the way I think. So, I think like, I'm very simplistic. A man has a dream. He really wants something to happen. He wants to make it happen. So he goes to do it. Why do I get angry with my folks? Well, I do because I witness them as that they don't believe in me. That they think that I'm all hot air. They think that I'm all talk. They think that in reality, when the going gets rough, I don't get going. It, like, basically, they think I just talk too much, and, and they don't believe me. They, they think I'm full of it. Mom, I get angry with her because I wonder if she's entirely given up on me. Like, she just doesn't care anymore. And whenever I complain or gripe, like, whenever I gripe and complain like this, the, then they'll deny it. So the, I wasn't saying that, and and then make me feel like a jerk as if somebody who is trying to um, to say these things as a way to shift the blame over to them because I didn't want to take responsibility. It's all in how you present things. That's like my sister told me, my sister Erica once told me that sometimes people can be lousy scholars and they don't really know what in the world they're talking about. But they're excellent writers. And they know how, even though they didn't really know what they were doing, they were able to write a really nice paper that although it was really full of nonsense, it was, it was a really good paper and it persuaded people very good. And it was just the way that it was composed would convince people regardless of the fact that maybe it could have been better developed. Uh, although she didn't say it like that. She said it in a way that made me feel convinced that there are ways like you can write a, a really killer paper for school even if you're not very good at school. You can still write a nice paper though uh, it's just all about how you state your case. So it's all communication. I mean, that's like what a publicist do, right? There's a lot of there's a lot of airheads such as myself in the entertainment industry who are going to blurt things out and they're going to be stupid and they're going to blurt out a bunch of stupid statements without even thinking. I mean, I do that all the time. But what do they got that I don't got? publicists, and people who have their back, for instance. That's like an example of that was clearly uh, satired in the movie Mr. Deed, starring Adam Sandler, when the news a there was a news agency that twisted the facts around to make Adam Sandler look like an idiot or an imbecile. Like they're basically making him look like a moron. 
and it's all about how you state your case. There are ways of making me seem like you could call me dishonorable, disrespectful, defiant. Um, I got an attitude problem. And just by saying that to me, that puts ideas in people's minds. It's like abuse, right? Saying, this person abused me. Or you could say, you have a very unique way with words, Mark. Uh, well, you're, you're a very unique individual. Uh, no, Mark got, hasn't got a single mean bone in his body. All, you know, I have not been hearing many of those complimentary statements very often. I've been hearing more negative ideas. And that sort of gets you hit with a double whammy because not only are you experiencing being yelled at or judgment judged by people or criticized, but that criticism puts, puts those same ideas into other people's minds so that not only are you being having to face the wrath of the people judging you and criticizing you, but other people around you are going to are going to, you know, wonder, gonna, they're going to start believing the people doing the criticizing and the judging. So that before you know it, everybody has those negative thoughts in their minds. And, and my mom's gotten to the point where she doesn't want to talk about it. She just wants to grab the phone out of my hand or be like, grab the camera and be like, like, shut up, blah, 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 blah. No one, you know, no one wants to take the time to talk with me. They just, it's like, this is extreme, but there, I once saw a newscast on birds that block the, the line of, that block the path of airplanes. And these people, there are people who save lives by trying to, you know, prevent the birds from getting in the way and all that. They just grab out their rifles and they shoot the birds down. I'm not sure if I remember if my memory serves me correctly, but I thought that I could have swore I heard like they do that. Or if an animal gets, you know, creates a raucous in public, people, you know, tranquilize it and stuff. You know, they don't because they can't. There's no reasoning with it. You know, they have to just physically manipulate the situation. Um, I remember one time when I was in high school, my parents wanted me out of the room. My mom was like, I'll get impatient. What ended up happening was she physically grabbed me and dragged me out of the room and slammed the door and stuff. And it's like... It's not about the being yelled at, I can take it. It's about the people resorting to physical means before even trying to talk to me about things. And then to have everybody turn around and say, Mark was getting belligerent. Um, he was out of order. Um, you could place him in legal trouble because Mark was being intimidating and stuff. And that is where the dysfunction comes in because nobody ever wants to talk. They just want to shut me up. And one thing that really sets off my temper is when I'm in the stores and I try to strike up a conversation with the cashier and my mom's like kind of goes, shh, let the person do their job. And just let people do their job. Sometimes I wonder if she's actually telling me to be quiet because she's concerned about the cashier being able to focus and stuff or whether she just doesn't want to listen to me. And recently I heard, like, I don't want to lug Mark around with blah, blah, blah. I, don't, I just can't deal with him anymore. So, never does anybody ever take the time to talk with me. And Mom will never talk with me. She'll be like, 
So go to my dad and tell him to try to talk to me. She can't talk to me at all. It's like she's she's done. She doesn't want to. And it's like if something were to happen to me and I was to not be around anymore, that would be one way of solving the problem, right? Yeah, because it dismisses having to talk to the person. See, like sometimes dismissing all communication assures that you get your way. I have a real problem trying to properly communicate my demands of what I want beforehand and then at the very last second kind of slip away, slip off and go like, oh, I'm going to go up to New Hampshire for a couple weeks. Why did I dodge my folks beforehand? Well, I did because if I didn't, if I could dismiss all communication with my parents, that would assure that I get to go up to New Hampshire. Right. To, to heck with trying to talk with them. I'm just going to go right up. So if if mom doesn't want to talk to me, see, talking or compromising with people always introduces the risk that you're you're going to get not quite everything you want, but you're going to get a little bit less than what you want, like a diminished variant, a diminished variation of what you want. You're like, heck, I don't want that. I want everything I want. So I'm just going to do this. But what happens to me is I have situations where I feel as though people have treated me wrong and where people try to make me feel like it was my fault because it was my behavior that caused people to do the thing that I thought was unfair to me. And... Um, they'll dismiss all communication and they'll just make the assumption that I started the whole thing. Um, and in the end, everybody asks my mother if she's alright and tries to introduce the idea that I was being physically dominant and physically abusive. When I had no, I would have no intention of ever laying a finger on anybody, like ever getting physically harmful. But people can believe what they want. People, it's when people start believing what they want to believe, and they doubt everything you say. Like maybe he was, maybe everything I just said in this video was a lie, or. Like when, say when somebody um, denies ever thinking perverted thoughts and they strongly fight those accusations, there's always a, an ounce of, you know, hmm, do you think he ever really kind of thought slightly perverted? So maybe he is a little bit perverted. Maybe he, there was a point in time when he was attracted to this person where he was thinking deviant, deviating ideas. Yeah, you know, while you're at it, hmm, might have a fairly entertaining court trial on our hands. But that's what I mean. That's the way society is. People get bored. People want to see, you know, it's like back in the medieval times. People wanted to see a hanging or a beheading or something like that because it was something you didn't see every day. And so once people, all it takes is a few people to start spreading animosity. And before you know it, you know, you might hang or behead an innocent guy. But innocent or guilty? Let's just find the person guilty because it's exciting, it's entertaining, stuff like that. Um, I get angry... What sets off my temper the most is when my mom hints that she's completely done. She doesn't want to communicate at all. And when she gets so pissed at me that she gets she gets so determined to get me in trouble 
that she gets more and more sophisticated and slick and tricky with her methods so that it almost becomes impossible for me to dodge getting into trouble. It's like I'm walking on a minefield or I'm walking on eggshells, you know. I have to be extremely careful because the second... And Mom will arrange it so that she'll she'll be extremely slick and tricky about it, where she'll do she'll treat me unfairly, but she'll do it in a way of which intricately thought out, where the, any time I show the slightest ounce of objection, I look like a wife beater type who's abusive and who hates women and stuff. And when people are filled with enough hatred, they're going to try to come up with any possible way to make the person they despise come out looking like the jerk. And they might actually come right out and say it to anybody advocating for them. Uh, well, I knew it wouldn't do it, but it was just getting on my nerves. And then the advocate could be like, yeah, I know, I know, he's... He's got to learn. Now, if I overhear that, that's what gets me angry. And then all people see is me acting out of character and me acting like, I don't know what the word is, angry, I guess. But um, I get frustrated because no matter how hard I try, Nobody takes my side. Nobody believes me. And it's, it's almost like you you want to say something, but you can't remember what you were going to say. Or you had a word that was at the edge, the tip of your tongue, and you couldn't remember the word. And you don't remember the word until you're all by yourself again. It's kind of like... Uh, and now, I mean, eventually it becomes as, as plain as the, the blue sky what people's real intentions are. You don't even have to do much more than barely even look at the person and you know exactly what's on their mind. You know, just what they're thinking. And so, sometimes I feel like it's the same way with, um, I know, I know what mom really, or I know what mom's really thinking. And all the, these accusations are bullcrap. It's all an excuse because she wants to dismiss dealing with me. <laughs> right. And, and I have no support. And so I always look like I am the rebel. You know how in like foreign dictatorship countries, rebel forces or rebel troops are always the ones to be feared? Including but not limited to Adolf Hitler, for instance. You know, they were rebels. They were revolting against the um, the order of stuff. And so I look like the rebel. And usually the rebels or the underdogs are the ones to be feared more than the ones on top. And then the, bru the brutal dictators are usually regarded as not all bad because they keep the order, although through means which are certainly in no way my code of conduct. Right, I mean, I certainly would not support brutal dictatorship, but those who do support it might keep order, might reserve order, or might, um, I'm trying to think, like Saddam Hussein might have um, maintained order in Iraq when his regime was, you know, keeping the, the minority safe. And then as soon as they over, we overthrew Saddam Hussein, that brutal dictatorship was gone, but now the majority was going to overthrow the minority that was at once, one point in time, the people that were on top. Um, people worry that since I've had so much built up anger over the years of having my mom get all scheming and tricky and stuff. The instant anybody gives me the slightest amount of an upper hand advantage, 
I'll turn around and stab her in the back, right? That's like what the thing... Somehow, the legal system is a lot nastier to the underdogs. Um, story of my life, right? It's Whenever I complain about something that happened at home, people look at me like I'm a loose cannon, like I'm the one that has to be watched. And remember what I said about the uh, academic papers. It's all about how you state your case. You could make any jerk or asshole seem like the best person alive, or you could make any super-duper honorable person look like a creep by pulling a few of the skeletons out of their closet. It's, you know, it's, it's if you have enough enemies or you have anyone who's built up enough hatred against you, they're going to scheme and they're going to try and make you look like an ass. And any time you try to gripe about it or complain about it, you're going to look like a, a lazy freeloader who's trying to point the finger at another person for a quick fix to all your life problems. So I sense a lot of animosity and hatred coming from mom, and she gets away with it because she's the one everyone believes. And people might warn me that someday I might learn that she was nowhere near as malicious as I always made her out to be, and that she was, now I destroyed her reputation, and I could have come so quietly and peacefully, but I had to make things more difficult for everybody else around me. Yeah. But my defense to that could be, um, shouldn't it be considered wrong to have all those ideas placed in somebody's head? Like, is there any reason why I need to feel the way I do? Sometimes it's bad enough to worry that somebody is going to cause harm to you as it is to have them actually running the risk of trying to cause harm to you. Um, people always stop me and accuse me of being inappropriate, as if parents always know best. But sometimes I just sense this hatred and it's not cool. And I wonder if there's isolation going on, because have I ever talked about, discussed any of this with the shrink? No, and my father keeps holding out on trying to get me help, because this, of course, I have no evidence of this, so this might all be my mind playing tricks on me, but I sometimes convince myself that perhaps my father is isolating me because as his way of saying, screw you, I'm not going to allow, I'm not going to, You. I see that you want to just be one of those people who's going to try and hire a counselor or a shrink so that they can believe everything that you say and you can try and join, uh, form a um, force against us and degrade, damage our reputation. And I will not allow that. So I'm worried that my father is not allowing me to seek help um, because he's afraid I'm going to damage my family's reputation. And but he's not going to tell me. He's going to be sneaky about it. He'll keep reassuring, offering up offering me up some reassurance that he'll get me a shrink, but he won't because he doesn't want me to. He's almost going like we'll take care of him. You know. So I worry that the plan is to not allow me any access to anyone, and furthermore, put more on my history record of poor behavior or of defiant behavior so that the more I effort I make to do things nobody is offering any assistance for me on, more people can exclaim that I've got a history of attitude issues. So that's that's when I get pissed, because it's not all about 
concern, doing it out of concern for me. Sometimes I worry it's about me causing an inconvenience to others. <laughs>